So um, this is um, this is a conservation of uh, energy question, and well, technically you don't have to use conservation of energy, but the reason I'm calling this conservation of energy question is if we were to try to treat this like a dynamics question, you are missing some suspicious bits of information. Like if this were a, a chapter five, chapter six question, I should have given you an angle here, theta, so that you can figure out, all right, what's the acceleration of the block? And it's accelerating through some distance here. And using that information, I can calculate its final velocity here. So that's what you would have done using force and kinematics approach. But um, the wonderful thing that we are covering in chapter seven and eight is that there's a simpler way to do this question by using the energy concept. So um, as you uh, by now probably know these energy formulas, um, so you know that uh, at this position here, the, um, the block has uh, potential energy that's given by MGH, gravitational potential energy, and uh, it has zero kinetic energy. And what we are assuming treating it as is because it says it's a frictionless inclined surface and reading through the rest of the question, I get a sense that as this slides down all the way down here, energy is conserved. It's an important check. It, uh, especially this week, now that we are introducing momentum conservation, it won't always be the case that energy is always conserved. So you want to check, read through the questions, um, make sure if anything's uh, setting you off, oh, I have kinetic friction energy, might not be conserved, I have applied for it. So, uh, make sure that this condition is met, that energy is conserved. And once you are satisfied, then you use energy conservation, by which I mean, uh, you use the fact that at this position, oh, by saying that my potential energy at that height was MGH, I was implicitly <laughs> setting uh, Y equals zero here. <laughs> so at this position here, potential energy is zero relative to that reference point. And now it'll have some kinetic energy that we are going to try to find out. So now we use conservation of energy strategy to first find the velocity here, then, and then we'll have to use um, kinematics approach to find this distance here. And by the way, um, this connection here is what you will have to make for your lab seven also. That's why I want you to do this question first. So in the conservation, <clears throat> in conservation law problem solving approach, I guess we don't have uh, something that's quite like a uh, standard strategy where I have a rigid step one, two, three, four that you should go through. Uh, it, it gets more flexible. It's like with anything as you become more proficient at something, as you um, become better at it, uh, it's uh, less of a rigid rule and more of uh, what principles are you following. So one of the principles is that you should be kind of double checking things. So one, you should identi identify or double check, verify, conserve the quantity. So I've already done that. I've verified that energy is conserved. And two, using the conserved quantity, you set up this equation. And the equation looks like initial conserved quantity is equal to final conserved quantity. And this initial and final are not necessarily the very beginning and the very end. It's almost a kind of an arbitrary label. I'm gonna call this one initial and I'm going to call this final. I guess it's not so arbitrary as it's the useful point. It's the two points uh, snapshot, two snapshots, the points in time that you can use to find an information that you're interested in. 
here I'm interested in finding the speed here. So the snapshot here is useful. And because I'm given the height here, snapshot here is useful as giving me um, information needed. So, so I need to write down that information. So for this question, this uh, kind of generalized expression becomes initial potential energy plus the initial kinetic energy, that is the initial mechanical energy, is equal to the final potential energy plus the final kinetic energy or the final mechanical energy. And I identified all these numbers here, so I can just write them down now. So initial potential energy, mgh, plus the initial kinetic energy, zero, is equal to the final potential energy, zero, plus, and here I write down the expression for the final kinetic energy. So I don't know what this V is, but that doesn't stop me from writing down the expression for kinetic energy, which is one half mass times velocity squared. So that's it. Uh, let me simplify this a little bit so that uh, I don't have all those unnecessary zeros. So I have mgh is equal to one half mv squared. You see that masses cancel out, good. Um, and I guess it's a matter of just solving for this v. I can multiply both sides by two that's gonna cancel out this two, and then take the square root of both sides. Um, that'll get rid of the square there. So let me write down the cleaned up version. The cleaned up version looks like a velocity at the bottom of the ramp is equal to square root of two g h. And it's always good to check the units. Velocity, speed, it should be in meters per second. And here, g is in meters per second squared. Height is in meters. So I have a meter squared per second squared, square rooted. So you need to seem to work out. All right, so that's the expression for speed. And I guess for the purpose of this question, you can plug in the numbers in here. That will give you a speed, a numerical value, v naught. And you could use that for the remainder of the question. Um, so yeah, let me just imagine that you did that. So you have, um, so you have we not here from plugging in the numbers. And so this was uh, part one of this question. And maybe I should have done this explicitly. Um, and this is uh, something that you will have to learn to do especially as we introduce more tools of problem solving. Uh, more, more and more often, you will find the problems that can't be solved using only one strategy. You have to use a mixture of, you have to use one, two, or more uh, different strategies at different points. Here, uh, for the part of finding out what is the velocity here, conservation of energy worked fine. It worked great. But as you try to find this distance here, I hope you realize quickly that conservation of energy doesn't give you anything. Standard strategy doesn't give you anything. This, in fact, suspiciously looks like a, a kinematics problem where something is launched horizontally. Oops. Something is launched horizontally with some speed and you're trying to find some um, parameters of motion. How far does it travel before it lands? So, so this is where you have to switch gears and apply kinematics. So this is for the part two of the question, which is where you apply kinematics. And um, this is one of the things that make physics cumulative. So you learn the kinematics in chapters three and four, and you cannot ever forget them. You should still have it somewhere in your head and be able to use it whenever you are called upon to. So I'm going to use V0. I'm going to take this as a given quantity so that my expressions will be a little bit simpler. If I want to, at the very end, I can always plug this in to get an answer that depends only on the given parameters. Um, so, all right, let's do it. With the kinematics, what you need to do is you need to, uh, with the, kinematics, 2D kinematics, projectile motion, 
what you need to do is introduce coordinate axis, X and Y, and analyze the situation um, according to two independent motions, one along X and one along Y. So it looks like uh, the one along X, which will eventually give me the range D, uh, I'm given the initial speed and because it's projectile motion, zero acceleration. So there's no acceleration in the X direction. So basically the um, kinematics equation you have is the distance traveled is equal to the initial speed times time. So looking at this, I need the duration of time. That's a parameter I'm missing that I need to be able to answer I need the, uh, the quote unquote again, final time to be able to find the distance D. So to find the final time, I look at the motion along the Y direction, hoping that that'll give me some information about how long the, the block is in the air. So um, in the vertical direction, I have um, the Y acceleration of minus G but the uh, initial y velocity of zero. So that will make some things a little bit easier. So I can write down my um, kinematics formula. I guess I'll use, uh, since I'm given the height information, I'm given the position information. So let me write down position equation and see where that leads me. My height y is equal to minus one half g t squared, that's the acceleration portion, plus zero times t, because I have zero y velocity, and uh, plus the initial height, capital H. All right, so for the uh, final time, tf, what I'm looking at is time at which, oh, I guess um, I've shifted my uh, <laughs> y reference where my y is equal to zero. Uh, yeah, I'm not using this reference anymore. <laughs> um, this is um, part of the reason I'm calling this part one and part two. And what I need to ensure is that I'm consistent within the part. So let me continue. So at the final time, I'll say my uh, y position is equal to zero. All right, so it's a matter of solving for time. Because this linear term is zero, that makes my work a little bit easier. I can just move this, uh, move this over and multiply through by two over G, take the square root. So let me do that in my head and get this. When you do all that, you get T final is equal to H times two over G or two H over G square rooted. I needed that to get rid of square. So plug this final time into this expression here. That'll get me what D distance is. So the distance D is equal to um, V naught, which is some speed that I know somehow, times square root of 2H over G. And uh, if I have a value of V naught numerically, I can plug in the numbers here and I'll be done and that's it.